Hi there, Matt Allington here again, and this week I'm going to share a video which is a follow-up from my article last week. So last week I wrote this blog article and produced a video on how to compare any two items between each other. So in the case of the article last week, what I did was I used the AdventureWorks database and I allowed the user to select a particular year, say 2018, and then do a comparison with any other year that they wanted to use. So you can go back and watch that video if you'd like to have a look at that. But down in the comments section this morning, um, there was this comment here from Arta, and he's saying, what would happen if I wanted to filter the comparison slicer so that it only shows the values that are not selected in the first slice. And I just thought that was just a, a great idea and it would make a great follow-up video. So the video today is called Filter One Slicer Compared with the Value in Another Slicer. And I'm going to explain how to solve that problem using the AdventureWorks database. Okay, so here I am inside the AdventureWorks database that I used for the last demo. Just a quick review of the data model. So I have the normal data model for AdventureWorks where I have calendar customers, products and territory. And I created this additional copy of the calendar table, which I'm using for my second slicer. And I do have this inactive relationship between the comparison calendar table and the sales table. And the way this works is that you can pick any calendar year and when I click this slicer it impacts this total sales measure and this one down here impacts the comparison year and once I have any two years selected I can work out what the comparison change is versus the, the two selected years. And so the requirement was how do I make this second slicer, this one here, not show 2018 as an option. So if the user selects calendar year as 2018 from the first slicer, I don't want to show calendar year 2018 as an option in the second slicer. Now the way I'm going to approach this problem is I'm going to try and filter this slicer using the filtering pane out on the right hand side. So when I click on this calendar year comparison slicer, you'll note that in the filters pane I have three choices. I can filter on the visual, put a filter on the page or a filter on all pages. So this is like a hierarchy of filtering behavior if you like. And so what I am able to do is I'm able to add a measure into this section here. I can drop a measure into this drop zone within the filters on this visual. And based on the result of the measure, I can choose to show or not show the items in this slice. And so I need to be able to write a measure that will tell me which value is selected up here. And based on the result of that measure, I need to show or not show that value. So that's the problem that I'm going to try and solve. Now, the first thing that I think I will do is I'll come up to the comparison calendar and I'm going to rename this column. I'll call it comparison year. I'll just call it comp year. Just so that I've got a slightly different name, I think it's going to make it easier. So this is the year. And this is the comparison year. And it's just going to make it a little bit easier when I'm looking at my visuals to see which one I've selected. Now, if I break this problem down into its component parts, what I need to be able to do is I need to be able to detect which value has been selected in the top slicer. And then I need to write a measure that says don't show that value in the second slicer. So that's basically the problem that I need to solve. So I think what I'll do is I'll put a card and I'm going to write a test measure. And in fact, uh, what I do quite often when I'm solving these problems is I start to write my measure, but I sort of build upon it as I go. So I'm going to write a new measure and I'll just call it test for now. And I need to know which value is selected in my first slicer. So that would be selected value of the calendar year. So this is a measure. It's going to return a value. If I put that into my card, then whichever value I select in my top slicer is reflected here. So that's the first part of the problem solved. I now know which item is selected in the first slicer. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to write a measure that tells me 
to hide that value. So, okay, so I'm going to change this into a matrix. And what I need to do is I need to bring in the different years. I want to be able to visualize what I'm doing here. So I'm going to bring the comparison calendar years. So into my visual and I'm just going to turn off this filter so I can see them all. So, so now notice what I've done here. I've actually created a visual that helps me see what's happening underneath the hood. So when the comparison year is 2016, it doesn't have any impact on the value selected from this slicer. And that's because there is no filtering that's occurring. The comparison year is not filtering the sales table and it's also not filtering the calendar table. So regardless of what value is in the comparison year calendar table, this measure is not impacted. But what I do need to do is I need to get some sort of flag. I need to be able to flag this one here so that when the comparison year is equal to what I've selected in the first slicer, that's when I need to hide it. And so I need to write a measure basically that returns a value here telling me that, hey, the value in this slicer happens to be a match for the value in the comparison year. So I need to write a measure that's going to do that. So I think what I'll do is I'll keep that test measure and I'll just use this inside my new measure. And I'm going to write a new measure in the comparison calendar table. And so I'm going to call this measure hide equals, and I'll use a variable to start with. The variable will be selected year equals selected value. And if I go return selected year, and I'll put this in to the visual. And so at this point in time, it's, it should give me exactly the same thing. So now what I want to do is I only want to display a value in this column if there's a match and between this and this. So I need to know what comp here. So let's do another variable. For comp year. And that's going to be the same selected value, but this time it will be the comp year column. And now I could say selected year equals comp year. So let's have a look at that. And now notice I've got a switch. So I've got a measure that returns true or false. And it returns true if the years are the same and it returns false if they're not the same. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this formula just to make it a little bit logically more understandable. And I'm going to say if selected year equals comp year, then return the value hide. Otherwise, it'll just return blank. And so when I modify the formula, now I've got a measure that returns the value hide or blank depending on the selection in these two slices. And so now what I should be able to do is click on this comp year slicer, get my new hide measure. I'll bring it in as a filter on this visual and I'll say contains hide, apply filter. Then if I clear this filter, you can see that based on the year that I'm selecting, it's only showing that year. So that's obviously logically incorrect. And I can change this to does not contain, apply filter, and there we have it. So now when I click on the slicer 2016, the second slicer updates to not show the value that I've selected from the first slicer. Now, of course, this principle can be used in different ways. I've said, does not contain hide, but you could obviously modify the logic however you want. But the key to solving this problem is that you need to write a measure that detects what value is selected in the first column, what value is selected in the second column. In this case, both of those columns are two separate slices. Notice how I wrote these little test measures so I could actually visualize what was going on with each of those. And then I could actually work out how to write the logic 
so that I can get this, I call it a switch, but a way of visualizing which ones should be shown, which ones should not be shown. And then I added that measure into a filter for the visual. In this case, that happens to be a slicer.